All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Tuesday, and uh, this is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group. So a uh, little bit of uh, disappointing price action today, considering where the U.S. markets finished, uh, excuse me, where U.S. markets opened for the day. So, you know, we're going to see, we're going to hear a lot of drama about, um, you know, reversals and so forth. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of people really overanalyzing today's move. First of all, we've had a huge run up. So, you know, I think this was, we can't go up in a straight line. It's just not how market, markets work, guys. So, you know, yes, this does look like possibly a little bit of a reversal day is we really haven't done anything in terms of ducking below the five period moving average. So there's really not anything lost. Of course, we didn't blast off and go higher like a rocket ship. But again, this is good. I mean, you know, I, I my most or the thing that I'm most concerned with right now is a blow off top, meaning we get so overbought that we get a violent sell off. So that's what concerns me most, especially with the market still at an RSI of 80. And, um, you know, so if you had a big, uh, you know, a, a large amount of profits uh, earlier in the day and they just didn't pan out, just put things in perspective. Uh, I think, you know, maybe going for a walk and just realizing like, for the most part, most of us have had uh, locked in and, and, and have had a huge month of gains, almost equivalent to a whole year of gains in the first couple of weeks. But you have to just put things in perspective and not overanalyze. Um, I, I just saw a lot of that going on today. So there's a couple things, right? I mean, the VIX can't stay, uh, you know, at a nine forever, right? We just, the market ebbs and flows. And, um, you know, notice we did get a spike up in volatility. I think that was really a great, a great um, signal for the day. I ended up taking off a lot of my risk uh, this morning. Um, you'll be able to see, you know, if you're a member of Tribeca Trade Group, you'll see that. But I think I took like eight targets this morning, just like in the first two hours, as I was taking off a lot of trades at the end of last week. So just paring down a lot of long option risk. So basically, let me just spell this out for you. You know, just, just analyze this in terms of what type of a trader that you are. If you are a strictly a cash trader, this does not matter to you, right? I mean, we have not broken any, especially like if you're if you're a uh, trend trader. This we've not broken any levels pretty much anywhere in terms of risk assets. So there's not really much to kind of do, obviously. Then you know take profits if we're you know where we're very overbought, which we we definitely were on on in multiple sectors and and, and multiple indices. Um, that's for the long term trader. There's there's not really much to do in my cash account. I didn't do anything. My cash trend account, I, I did nothing um, because the overall trend is up. Uh, so second time frame, let's say if you're a medium to long term swing trader, uh, I, I think, you know, from some of the trades that I had on the last where I initiated the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, I've been taking profit targets all all along and took off a few more trades. You know, like I said, I took a, took a lot of targets this morning. So. But still, I think for the most part, if, if you're out three over three months in your swing trades, um, you know, there, there's not a whole lot to really be concerned about other than that we're heading into earnings season. And like I said last week, this is typically we get into a, the market gets a bit choppy once you get into earnings season, right? We're getting a whole new data point that comes out from uh, from companies. So, uh, you know, people want to see what the data points are before they do a lot of buying. Um, certainly, there's names that have been run up into earnings, you know, like Amazon for, you know, a lot of the FANG stocks are getting, have gotten run up pretty, pretty decently. So that's, you know, that's going to trap you out of earnings trades. You know, unfortunately, that's just what happens sometimes is that these names really get extended and there's really not much of a trade to put on for earnings. So names like Amazon, uh, I think, you, you know, that's going to be a really tough earnings trade. We'll see if we get a pull, if we get a pullback in the next week further. That would be great if you're bullish Amazon and you haven't gotten in yet. But, um, you know, here was your entry point for Amazon. And um, if you didn't get in, you know, then I think at this point you, you, you wait for a little bit of a pullback uh, before the earnings date. But, um, you know, that, that was the story, uh, you know, across the board. And I can give you examples of this in, in 50 different stocks. And I think now is the time to kind of look for either names that haven't participated uh, and, and basically just 
pay attention to what the tape is buying. I think re some really good examples of things that um, are seeing buying that haven't are are um, some gold miners. PVG, Newmont is a name that we saw uh, with some nice call buying about, I, I think it was actually two weeks ago, which I'm in. So I'm in a couple of these names. And these names act as good hedges. So you don't have to go out and buy the VIX, uh, which I would never, ever do, uh, like VXX or anything like that, um, because that is a silly trade. But I think when you have just a diversified portfolio where you have a couple things like gold miners, and again, just paying attention to what the tape is buying, they've been buying some different things. It's not, it hasn't been all of one particular thing. So I have PVG on, which is again, a gold miner as well as Newmont, and those trades worked really well today. And that kind of serves as a, as a hedge because it's very, very good uh, portfolio diversification. And I talked about that in a, in a previous video. A couple other things that were interesting today. You know, in the first couple hours, the option activity was pretty fast, but it was a lot of things that were really short dated, which seems like it was it's mainly momentum players um, who are buying the weekly stuff. It's not guys, it's not smart money, um, in, in my opinion. The guys who are just chasing momentum, those are not the trades that I tend to follow. Uh, those are guys who are looking to push, 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 and you know, push the name up a little bit more. The smart money is the trades where they go out a couple months. Maybe it's a block of stock or or repeat activity. Uh, you know, so we saw a couple blocks of some things today. We saw some Wells Fargo. Remember, Wells Far Fargo already re reported earnings, so they don't report till March. So there's a couple of nice blocks of Wells Fargo that went up. Again, kind of tough here. I, I did not take that trade in Wells Fargo. It's just a little bit too far um, past for me, even though it's come in a little bit. But um, they bought some, and this is what they've been doing with Wells Fargo, and it's worked. So, um, you know, who am I to say? But uh, th these are September 62 and a half calls. And that's what they've been doing. They've been going out and giving themselves plenty of time in some of these Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo trades. So part of the the game uh, with this is is to write this down that they that they bought a big block of 62 and a half calls. And if we happen to see a little bit further of a pullback uh, with the gov possible government shutdown looming, you know these are names that might be attractive to you. Teradyne, TR. I got into this trade again. Wasn't really interested in adding big risk today. But um, I've liked this name on option activity before and uh, was able to take two targets uh, in this trade in TER. I got in, I think, for around 120 or 123 and sold some uh, at 180 today. So off of uh, CNBC men mentioning that there was a big block of, of option activity. All right. So um, and that was mainly there's a couple other small trades in here, but really nothing that noteworthy. Uh, that that uh, that took place. There were some bots calls, which I think is is interesting because we just don't see a lot of calls in this in this particular uh, ETF, the robotic ETF. This is a this is something that I've been in now uh, bots for probably about two months. Um, you know, on the 50-day moving average. So I don't know why. Uh, no need for me to buy calls at this point. Um, maybe somebody substituting some cash, but they did look like they were they were bought aggressively. All right, so um, that's mainly my, my market message. You know, there was uh, besides the gold miners, a couple other defensive groups outperformed. Consumer staples were up a little bit. You know, but some of these groups have been really really uh, smoked. Um, I got a couple of questions about X, XLU today. There was some XLU calls today and Friday, but. Um, it's at this point, it's a counter trend trade. It's below, it's broken below the 200 day moving average. So let me ask you something. If you were to take this trade um, in XLU that is now broken down and is way oversold um, to the downside, which I, I agree it could be due for a bounce, but for a long term swing trade, where's your support? What, where, what level are you going to trade against? The, you know, when things come into the 200-day moving average, you always have that level of saying, hey, if it breaks the 200-day moving average, I'm out of it. What are you going to do here for a long swing trade? Unless you find something, you know, maybe down here. But to me, there's just better places. The fact that the utilities have broken down means something to me. It means that there's money that's going, has, go, has gone into different places, more attractive places. Now, most likely, eventually, money will start coming back into utilities, and, and you know maybe that's you know somebody's taking a shot at XLU today and, and yesterday. But um, I just don't find that that's something that I really want to buy on on the dip, other than for a quick trade. You know, if it's going to bounce for a couple of days because it's oversold, sure, it it you know possibly could do that. But 
there's just not for a standpoint from if you're a technical trader you know what level are you going to trade against that's really good i mean it is what it is and people don't realize this but once things have broken the 200 day moving average your stock is now in a downtrend so i'm all about buying uh you know buying the dips and names um into support right in in, in an uptrend but this is broken so why even mess with this i don't you know i, I don't get the fascination um why some people will want to do that other than if they if they're true uh value if they're true um, fundamental and they think that it's cheap valuation wise then fine but for if you're a technical person this is that's not where you want to get involved in a name uh again the way that you can kind of get over that with the 200 day moving average is if you look for a level of support and i would say if it breaks 50 where are you going to go um so you know We'll see. But just to kind of give an illustration of I think people are like really trying to look for trades that necessarily aren't there. You know, the trade that uh, was take, that I took in PV, PVG, this is a name that we saw three times we've seen option activity in this. Friday, there was a lot of calls and I kind of just sat and said, huh, this is interesting. Uh, this is a gold miner. Uh, you know, they really bought some calls aggressively on Friday. Today, once they came in for the third time that I've seen the trade, all right, you know, even though it's a, it's a sideways, choppy looking looking chart, it is uh, above the 200-day moving average. Whoops, let me zoom out, not zoom in. And it's so it's not the most attractive uh, looking chart in the world, but at least you have an area. You've got some things going on here where you could trade against 1094, and also down at 994 is your is your moving average, is your 200-day moving average. So a lot more uh, concrete. Uh, levels to, to go off of here in, in a gold miner. Um, I, I think Newmont, you know, we kind of spelled that out that out last week, which um, I've already taken three targets in this Newmont trade. But, um, you know, here was the technical level that we talked about, you know, break of the downtrend line. And uh, this, this, thing's, this thing's been off and running. All right, so that's today's recap. You know, the bottom line is don't get worked up by um, a reversal day where we start higher and go lower. Let's see what we do in the next couple days. But, um, you know, keep an eye on the VIX. That will give you uh, a little bit of a hint. Keep an eye on small caps. And, um, you know, keep an eye on short-term moving averages, too. That, that'll tell you. That'll give you a hint as well. All right. So that's today's video. Uh, we did put out today a new a new trend trade using options. It's a, it's a whole new platform. I don't really um, – I think we're one of the first – if not the first uh, company to go ahead and put out a, a the uh, strategy of using trend trading, but not just doing it in cash trades, but doing it in option trades. So new trade uh, that we put out today with um, all of the risk outlined and uh, and so on and so forth. Thanks for watching the video and have a great night.